Welcome to the video lecture series in history class 12th. Today we will continue with our discussion about fourth chapter which deals with thinkers, beliefs and buildings during 600 BCE to 600 CE. In this chapter we are dealing with four subtopics, two we have already discussed those are important historical monuments Sanchi and Amravati stoop and about new questions, sacrifices and debates. Today we will discuss about Jainism and Buddhism and after that understanding new religious traditions through sculptures and paintings. Jainism and Buddhism gives insight into origin and central teachings of Jainism compilation of teachings of Mahavira, spread of Jainism and in Buddhism its origin, teachings of Buddha, preparation and preservation of Buddhist text, Buddhist organization or Sangha and also about causes of the rapid growth of Buddhism and comparison between Buddhism and Jainism. Around 600 BC that is before common era to 600 CE that is common era, approximate 64 sects were prevalent and Jainism and Buddhism emerged as the most prominent among them. Now about Jainism, the basic philosophy of the Jainas was already in existence in North India before the birth of Vardhaman Mahavira. According to Jain traditions, Vardhaman Mahavira is the 24th Tirthankar. Tirthankar means the guide who shows path to men and women across the river of existence. Then what were the central teachings of Jainism? Firstly, Jainas believed that the whole world is animated. Even stones, rocks and water have life. Secondly, non-violence, especially towards humans, animals, plants and insects is the central theme of Jaina philosophy. Jainas believed in karmic theory that is according to Jain teachings the cycle of birth and rebirth is shaped through karma and to attain freedom from the cycle of karma. Jaina philosophy is stressed upon severe penance and asceticism. This penance and asceticism is possible only by renouncing the world and for renunciation living in monasteries is a necessity. In monasteries Jaina monks and nuns they took certain woes like non-violence. They took woe of aparigraha. Aparigraha means abstain from possessing property. They took woe of brahmachari that is to observe celibacy. No stealing, no lying. Now let us see about compilation of teachings of Mahavira. The teachings of Mahavira were recorded by his disciples in common man's language often in the form of stories which could appeal to ordinary people like you and me. For example, in Uttradhyan Sutta, a it is a Prakrit text story of a queen named Kamlavati. Kamlavati who is trying to persuade her husband to renounce the world and how one enjoys freedom once he or she gets free from the worldly things, the spread of Jainism. Jaina literature was produced in a variety of languages like Prakrit, Sanskrit and Tamil which shows that it is spread to many parts of India. Secondly, Jaina manuscripts were carefully preserved in libraries 
the libraries which were attached to the temples. Many stone sculptures of Jaina Tirthankaras were produced by devotees which have been recovered from various sites throughout India. Now let us talk about Buddhism now since they both were contemporary. Now Buddhism originated in India and very soon it is spread to various parts of the world. But Jainism did not spread to various parts of the world. As we can see in the map, Buddhism spread to China, Sri Lanka, Korea, Japan, Burma which is now called Myanmar, Thailand, Indonesia, many other countries. About origin of Buddhism, according to hagiographies, hagiography means it is a biography of a saint or religious leader which often praises the saint's achievements and may not always, may not always be literally accurate. Now, Gautam Buddha, the founder of Buddhism, his childhood name was Siddharth. He was the son of the chief of the Shakya clan and he was brought up in a very protected environment in palace between luxuries and he was kept away from the harsh realities of life. One day he persuaded his charioteer to take him into the city for a ride. There he saw four things. He saw an old man, a sick man, a dead body and a saint, an ascetic. An old man, a sick man and dead body made him realize that the decay and destruction of the human body is unavoidable. And the ascetic received to him had come to terms with old age, disease, death and he has found peace in himself. Now Siddharth decided to follow the path of the, that saint who is free from all these worries and everything. So Siddharth also left home, he meditated for several days and finally he attained enlightenment and thus called the Buddha. Buddha means enlightened. Now the teachings of the Buddha. Buddha taught about four noble truths. Those were the world is constantly changing. So it is transient that means anitya and there is nothing permanent in this world. So world is soulless that is anant. In this ever changing soulless world, sorrow, dukh is intrinsic to human existence. Means till humans are in existence sorrow will be there. Now how to get rid of sorrow? So human beings can get rid of sorrow by following the path of penances and ascetism known as eightfold path or ashtangic mark. Buddha did not say anything about the existence of God. According to Buddha, the social world is not of divine origin. Rather this social world, the world we all we are living in, it is created by humans. So Buddha advised householders and kings to be kind, caring and ethical. Example is an advice by Buddha to a wealthy householder named Sigal. This story is taken from Sudpitak. Sudpitak is one of the three Pitaks where Buddha advised him about how to behave with servants sannyasins, parents, teachers and his wife and an individual can attain self-realization and freedom from cycle of birth and death through individual efforts, not through sacrifices. His last words to his followers were, be lambs unto yourself as all of you must work out 
your own liberation. Rather than extreme path, Buddha advocated the path of moderation. Extreme path was followed by Jainas, not by Buddhist. Buddha advocated the path of moderation, that is between severe penance and self-indulgence, follow the middle path. Preparation and preservation of Buddhist text. Buddha always taught orally. None of his speeches were written down during his lifetime. After Buddha's death, around 5th or 4th century BC, his teachings were compiled by his disciples, that too at a council of elders or senior monks of Vaishali. Vaishali is in present day Bihar. These compilations were known as three pitaks. So, pitak I already told you na, part of three pitaks. So, three pitaks literally means three baskets to hold different types of texts. These three pitaks were written and classified according to length and subject matter. These are Sutpitak, Vinay Pitak and Abhidhamma Pitak. In Sutpitak, Buddha's teachings were included. Vinay Pitak, it included rules and regulations for those who joined monastic order or Sangh. And Abhidham Pitak, it dealt with philosophical matters. Later on, commentaries were written on these texts by Buddhist scholars. Texts like Deepavans, literally means the chronicle of the island and Mahavans, the great chronicle. They were written in Sri Lanka and contained regional histories of Buddhism in Sri Lanka. Buddhist texts were preserved in manuscripts for several centuries in monasteries in different parts of Asia. And modern translations have been prepared from Pali, Sanskrit, Chinese and Tibetan texts. Now about Buddhist organization or Sangh. The number of followers of Buddhism increased and thus Sangh, that is an organization of monks who too became teachers of Dhamma or the path of writer's living was formed. These monks, they led simple life with only essential requisites for survival. They lived on arms, thus called bhikkhus. Initially, only men were allowed in the Sangha. Later on, on the mediation of Ananda, who was Ananda? He was one of the dearest disciple of Buddha. So, when he requested Buddha, then women were also allowed in the Sangha and they were called Bhikkhunis. The first woman to be ordained as Bhikkhuni was Mahaprajapati Gautami. Mahaprajapati Gautami, she was the foster mother of Buddha and many Bhikkhunis later became theories. Theories means women who attained liberation, means the one who is free from the cycle of birth and death. All in Sangha, whether king, wealthy men, workers, slaves, craftspeople, anyone, once they are within the Sangha, they were treated equally as bhikkhus and bhikkhunis. The internal functioning of the Sangha was democratic, where decision was arrived at through discussions. If discussions failed, if discussions failed, decisions were taken by a vote on the subject. Now, let us discuss about causes of the rapid growth of Buddhism during and after Buddha. People were dissatisfied with existing religious practices and they were confused by the rapid social changes around them. Rather than claims of superiority based on birth, 
the importance was given to conduct and values in Buddhism. The emphasis was on myth. Myth means fellow feeling and karuna, compassion, especially towards younger and weaker section, which attracted people towards Buddhism. The number of followers increased rapidly when women were allowed to be part of Sangh along with men because women also got a chance to be part of Sangh. Now let us compare between Buddhism and Jainism. Both Mahavir and Buddha, they belong to the ruling class, one similarity. They both never differentiated on the basis of caste and they treated men from different social groups equally. Another similarity, both taught in simple common man's language, third similarity, both stressed on non-violence and they both were against sacrificial traditions, fourth similarity. Fifth similarity, both of them neither accepted nor denied God's existence and they both aimed nirvana or moksha that is cessation from the cycle of birth and but Buddha believed in middle path, neither severe penance nor overindulgence. Whereas Jainism advocated extreme penance and asceticism. Buddha became popular not only in India but also in other parts of the world. Whereas Jainism got confined only till India. So, in this subtopic. Jainism and Buddhism, we discussed about origin and central teachings of Jainism, compilation of teachings of Mahavira, spread of Jainism, then origin of Buddhism, teachings of Buddha, preparation and preservation of Buddhist text, Buddhist organization or Sangha, causes of the rapid growth of Buddhism and comparison between Buddhism and Jainism. Thank you.